everyone welcome back to my channel today I'm going to be setting up my new Epson 2760 EcoTank printer and converting it over to sublimation I wanted to do this video just in case anyone has a new printer and it's still sitting in the box and you're a little intimidated by it or you're just thinking about buying a printer in order to do sublimation the process is really easy and I just wanted to show you how it's done. If you find this video helpful in any kind of way, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. We would love to have you here. When you get your printer, it comes with ink. This is not the ink you will use for sublimation. You will need to purchase your own sublimation ink. The ink that I use comes from Amazon. It is the brand Printer Shack. It's fairly cheap. I believe you can get it for maybe $21 to $22. And I will leave a link below in the description box so you can check it out if you like. The ink does come with syringes and needles in order for you to add the ink to your printer. So from here you would get your syringes together and get your ink and go ahead and draw your ink up using a different syringe for each color. I am going to be taking some of my ink from another printer cartridge because this is my third sublimation printer and I use the same ink for them all. One of them has completely messed up so I'm just going to take some of the ink out of this one and just add it to my printer that way. Once you draw your ink up, then you're gonna go ahead and open the top of the printer. Each tank has a blue top. You're gonna lift that top up and carefully add ink to each one of the tanks. Now, you don't have to use a syringe, you can use the ink bottles that came with your printer. If you waste that ink and pour it out, rinse it out and let the bottle dry, then add your sublimation ink to that, and then turn the bottle upside down and you can add each tank that way. Because I'm keeping my ink, I chose to do it with the syringes. So another thing you want to remember to do, this is a brand new printer, you're not sure if it's going to work just right, so you don't waste all of your sublimation ink. It's probably a good idea not to fill the tanks all the way up, because I'm not sure how you would get that ink back out if the printer doesn't work. There are lines on each of the tank. So filling it a little bit above the line that has the arrow would probably be best. So I'm just going to go ahead and add each color to my printer. adding the ink to your printer then you want to go ahead and press the start button and it will prompt you on the screen each step that you need to take next done following all the steps that the printer asks you to do and you've printed out the two test sheets and gone through each step you are done 
setting up your printer. Your printer is now converted over to do sublimation. The only thing else that you need to do in order to start printing is to go to Epson website online and download the driver that is specific for your printer. Once you go through all of that and install the drivers, then you are able to start using your printer to do sublimation. There is nothing more you need to do. It is just that easy. Now I'm going to show you how well this printer works by doing my first sublimation print out. Now this printer, it takes 8 by 11 size paper. I did not have that size on hand. I only have 11 by 17. So I decided to print out with regular copy paper. I've heard that works well. I have never tried it myself, but I wanted to go ahead and test it out and show you guys so we can see if it works well together. press all turned on and we're going to go ahead and let that heat up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and then I press my images for 60 seconds. I like to lay a piece of butcher paper down on top of my mat just in case any of the sublimation ink leaks through. I'm going to be using a sheet of white felt. You can find these at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Walmart, they are less than maybe 50 cents a sheet to practice on for sublimation. So I'm gonna take my image and I'm gonna tape it down on top of the felt using heat tape. And then I'm gonna lay another piece of butcher paper on top of that. Here you can see I've got them sandwiched down together and we're just going to go ahead and press it and see how it goes. Now that it's finished, we're gonna go ahead and open the heat press up. Please remember that the press is hot. You do not want to burn yourself, so please be careful. It's also good practice to maybe use some type of heat gloves. You can find those on Amazon as well. I do wanna add that even though I use copy paper to try it out this time, I will be using sublimation paper in the future. Just wanted to try this out to see if it actually works. The brand that I use is just regular HP copy paper, nothing special to it. I had heard that the Hammer Mill brand worked, but HP brand is what I had on hand, so that's what I wanted to try out. I will say that I'm very impressed with the way that it turned out. It actually worked. The colors are vibrant. You will see that in just a little bit. So if all you have is copy paper or you don't want to spend the money on sublimation paper, then try copy paper to see if that works for you. If you enjoyed this video, again guys, please like the video and if you are not subscribed, if you don't mind considering subscribing, it would really help my channel out out i will be bringing more sublimation videos tutorials i like to try out different sublimation blanks you can see my past videos of me sublimating different items if you're doing sublimation already i have an etsy shop where i have a few sublimation blanks down i will leave a link of my etsy shop down below if you want to check that out if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below as well and I will see you in my next video guys.